We don't expect every conversation on this trip to be easy. There are obviously tough issues facing the region and difficult choices ahead. But the Secretary believes it is the responsibility of the United States of America to lead diplomatic efforts to tackle those challenges head on, and he is prepared to do that in the days to come. He will focus on, as he has consistently since October 7th, preventing the conflict from expanding. He will discuss specific steps parties can take, including how they can use their influence with others in the region to avoid escalation. It is in no one's interest, not Israel's, not the region's, not the world's, for this conflict to spread beyond Gaza. We have not seen the conflict spread in, in, in to the extent that other countries have been brought into it, something that we have worked hard to avoid. Yes, we have seen the Houthis take dangerous actions in the Red Sea, and that's why you have seen us uh, assemble a coalition, work with our ally, par allies and partners to make sure that, uh, to make clear that those uh, attacks on commercial shipping are, are unacceptable. But I, I don't want to say that we are by any region, by any step, out of the woods. Issuing Afghanistan as a safe zone for tourist attacks that one of the biggest dangers uh, of, of this entire situation was that the conflict would spread and we would risk a region-wide conflagration. It's why it's been one of the major focuses of all of his trips and will continue to be um, uh, a top priority. Are not necessarily going to be easy either. It could be difficult. And, and much the risk is real. The concern is high. It has always been real and the concern has always been high. And that's why the temple of activity you have seen from this administration to try to lower the risk of widespread regional conflagration has also been high from the beginning. Um, there have been a series of events since October 7th, any number of which raise the risk of further escalation and further conflict. And it's why you've seen us try to take a measured approach. To be, to be tough, what, what are the tough parts that you're expecting? The Secretary believes we need to try to make progress on getting humanitarian access in. The Secretary need, believes we need to make progress on uh, minimizing harm to Palestinian civilians. He needs, believes we need to make progress on continuing to try to keep the, the, the conflict from escalating, which is why um, he's returning to the region, because he thinks it's important to be there face to face and engage in these diplomatic efforts. Even if it's tough sometimes, um, it's the job of the United States to do that. We saw yesterday that Israel was able but it's not enough, and we want to see more. So you will see specific asks about uh, things that can be done to get more aid going in, but also specific asks that we will have about additional deconfliction measures that need to take place so aid can more freely move around uh, uh, Gaza once it gets in and be delivered to uh, the people that, that need it. Is this a widespread practice that the U.S. is engaging in? He will make it clear on all of his stops that the Houthi attacks are unacceptable and they threaten not just the uh, commercial interest, the direct commercial interests that are involved, the ship and the crew, on the ships and the crews on those ships, but also the regional, regional economy and the world economy. When you see either run by Egypt or other countries. I, I don't want to preview. There are going to be battlefield um, uh, uh, developments back and forth where you see each side gaining or losing territory. But when you look at the ultimate stakes of this war, it's quite clear that Ukraine is going to exit this war uh, independent strong with an improved economy and looking west when what, what uh, Russia wanted at the outset was not just a Ukraine that was looking east, but Ukraine that was actually part of Russia. Clear what the result will be in Ukraine. I'm not at all clear what the result broadly is when there are a number of things that still remain, but there is one thing that I think we're quite clear about, which is that we believe that Russia, Putin has failed and will continue to fail in his overall objective. Okay.